Splinter Cell Chaos Theory Released in 2005, Chaos Theory is quite easily the best third-person stealth game ever made, and forms the pinnacle of the series. Inspired by other stealth games like Tenshu, Metal Gear Solid, and Thief the Dark Project, Ubisoft have taken all the things that make these games great and rolled them into one game that has set the standard for the stealth genre. With a Metacritic score of 94% and an average user rating of 8.9, it is also Ubisoft's best performing game. In E3 2004, it won 3 out of 4 awards for Best PC Game, Best Action Action adventure game, and thanks to the power of the Unreal Engine, best commendation for graphics. While most critics at the time of its release focused on the visuals and AI of this masterpiece by Ubisoft, we're taking a look at the game 15 years into the future, and there are more unique aspects to the game that made it successful and memorable, earning it the pole position for stealth games. So what really makes Chaos Theory shine? Well, based on the MDA framework, Ubisoft have delivered players a game full of aesthetics, but it's the narrative and fellowship that helps deliver a memorable experience that games today struggle to contend with. Grounded in a variety of believable mission scenarios, the story helps set the tone for players. The plot itself enhances the realism by creating a believable story that players can immerse themselves in. Players are given the freedom to choose how they want to approach each situation, whether it's all guns blazing or sticking to the shadows to rely on non-lethal stealth equipment. It's these options that make the game exciting and fun for players, wanting more than the average action adventure. The fluidity of character movement and control provide players the ability to perform acrobatic maneuvers with ease, to access areas or eliminate threats without alerting guards, keeping players immersed. All these elements provide a memorable, fun-filled experience for players. So what could Ubisoft do to take Splinter Cell series to another level? Co-op. The fellowship aspects of the game add the icing on top. It promotes player interaction and replayability in a social environment. After all, what's the point of looking cool after mastering ninja-like moves if nobody gets to witness it? In co-op mode, players have the ability to boost teammates to areas not normally accessible if playing solo, opening up ample opportunity to take alternative paths and completing the objectives with a friend. From timing enemy takedowns to providing distractions so that a friend can sneak by undetected. Games today struggle to deliver anywhere near as much of this aesthetic, despite having an advantage in technology and thousands of other titles to take inspiration from. It is this cooperative experience and the memories shared with friends that really create this as an unforgettable game. In the same way Battletoads for Nintendo brought memorable cooperative play, Chaos Theory has delivered the ultimate 3D stealth experience that can be shared with friends and still manages to inspire games today. For Honor was the brainchild of Jason Vandenberg, creative director from Ubisoft who wanted to deliver a visceral combat game that showed what it was like to be a samurai, viking or knight in a brutal battle. Development of this game started in 2013 with a small team working on the concept in an attempt to make a remix of the chop em up genre. The game was first officially announced in 2015 at E3 and after many iterations of beta testing over the next two years it was finally released in 2017. Despite being a fairly unique game, For Honor is one of Ubisoft's less popular titles, achieving only a 76% Metascore from Metacritic and having mixed responses from players and critics alike. For Honor focuses primarily on sword play, with a mix of timing and strategy to deliver an intense fast-paced fighting experience to its player. Consequently, there is a rather steep learning curve, which has influenced general user opinion and the size of the player base. This is worth mentioning because the game is predominantly online multiplayer. Despite the game having its own smaller story mode, Ubisoft elected to continue building the lore with updates to the multiplayer which they are still developing to this day, especially when introducing new characters, game modes or mechanics. The current lore event, being called The Truce of Wyvendale, points to an interesting time of peace in the usually war-torn world and has sparked a slight growth in the player base. Based on the MDA framework, For Honor delivers an experience of fellowship, fantasy and narrative. For Honor has this constant board game-like war going on. When a player starts the game, they are made to pledge their allegiance to one of the three original factions, the Knights, Vikings or Samurai. Once you pledge your allegiance to a faction, a player can earn them troops by completing objectives or fighting fairly in multiplayer game modes. After the matches, they can elect to deploy them to territories on the so-called board. Every few hours, the territories cycle depending on the troops earned by each faction's players. All factions are rewarded for their efforts, however, the winning faction always gets more than the others. 
This creates a sense of social structure within the factions and a sense of competition outside of them, as well as promoting team play and inspires a sense of kinship between players. Overall, every battle that a player partakes in builds the story a little bit further. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a third-person action-adventure RPG developed by Ubisoft Quebec, which was released in late 2018. It was rated by Metacritic at 86% and had a generally positive response from its community. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, players embark on a quest to become a legendary mercenary and to reunite their family. Odyssey, like Assassin's Creed Origins, broke away from the traditional fighting and stealth mechanics of the series, electing to introduce DPS stats to player weapons and making stealth overall far more optional than most other games from the franchise. Origins had a similar design but was far less well received by the community, making Odyssey a true milestone and symbol of hope for the next generation of Assassin's Creed games. Outside the typical RPG character management and trying to find their family, the player is thrown into a huge open world that is rich with side quests, miscellaneous activities, and interesting characters to talk to. As a bonus, and due to the setting being in ancient Greece, players may also participate in battles from the Peloponnesian War. Based on the MDA framework, the game focuses heavily on fantasy, narrative, and self-expression. Generally speaking, most of the Assassin's Creed games fit into these aesthetics. This is because all the Assassin's Creed games are connected by an overarching story about assassins against the Knights Templar. To summarize, Assassin's Creed Odyssey is one of the more story-based Assassin's Creed games, and its RPG elements mark a step in the right direction for the next generation of Assassin's Creed games should Ubisoft want to continue developing them. Parquet 4 is an FPS game developed by Ubisoft, which is primarily inspired by 10 year long Maoist insurgency in Nepal. It takes place in Kirat, a fictional Himalayan country. The game follows Azagali, a young Kirati American who turns to the country of his birth to fulfill his mother's dying wish to bring her ashes back home. He gets caught in civil war to overthrow the opposite regime of a dictator named Pagan Men. The main gameplay mechanics and mission involves taking about outposts, invading fortresses, and destroying opium farms. Co-op mode in this game is excellent. It's always fun to play missions or coordinate strike with your buddy. Even getting from one place to another in this vast world of Kirat is too good when you've got buddy alongside with you. As for the competing multiplayer, I can attest to the fact that it remains entirely linear and rather feels like a sad atom than a competing multiplayer that is fun or memorable. Talking about the art style, Parque 4 basically uses a realistic art style. Most of the characters, environment and weapons are inspired by Himalayan regions of Tibet and Nepal to develop a stunning environment. Also, designers of the game have gone extra miles to make the visuals of the game flourishing. Far Gifford has brilliant economy, where everything in Kirat has cause and effect. Hunting and skinning animals lets you craft items or wallets to carry more money. Also, you can earn experience by playing the game which lets you upgrade some cool skills of your character. So overall, Far Gifford is an awesome game with lots of new mechanics which makes the user action a lot better than its previous franchise. Also talking about the aesthetics of the game, since it is an open world game, the main aesthetic is Discovery. Here's our final thoughts on Ubisoft and what makes them such a great developer. Ubisoft rely heavily on great narrative, believable plots, highly detailed visuals, unique controls and precisely constructed systems to deliver aesthetically pleasing titles. While the average Metacritic score may not always show record-breaking figures, the player base on their titles expand up to 40% year-on-year -year according to CEO Eve Gimo. Even though the games they develop have deep storylines and provide hours and hours of entertainment for its players, they always go a step further in providing extremely profitable multiplayer modes for their online community of players. This gives Ubisoft the opportunity to develop targeted player recurring investments, also known as DLC. This is where Ubisoft stands out in the MDA framework as a company focused on fellowship. And this fellowship is what draws the players to their Uplay store and continues to be the driving force that strengthens and grows Ubisoft as a AAA developer.